Thank you very much for the opportunity to present my research. My name is Hannah Hala Burda. I'm from NYU Stern, and I'm presenting a research joint with Yanis Bakos, also from, uh, from NYU. Uh, we, uh, we, we talk about smart contracts, uh, connected uh, internet sensors, and efficiency of contracting. Um, the, uh, the interest in blockchain technologies has been closely tied to the promise of smart contracts to change interaction, business interactions, and making the business landscape more decentralized and democratic. Uh, smart contracts themselves uh, go back earlier than Bitcoin's blockchain. They go back to uh, the concept was de defined by Nick Shabo in 1996, where he presented now seminal Carly's example. In that example, a buyer or um, a buyer of a car who is paying in installments or leasing a car, when a payment is missed, smart contract will automatically lock the car and uh, transfer the control rights to the bank. With uh, that automated um, control, uh, uh, control transfer, the bank may be willing to make uh, loans to population that, uh, can we start over? Gabriel? Yes, yes, we can, we can, we can. Um, yes, hold on. Oh, I... Sorry, oh. I, okay. Thank you very much for opportunity to share this research. I'm Hannah Hala Burda from NYU Stern, and this is joint research with Yanis Bakos, also from NYU Stern. Uh, the uh, huge interest in blockchain uh, is closely related to the promise of smart contracts to change interactions and uh, make the business landscape more decentralized and democratic. The concept of smart contracts uh, themselves is uh, comes from earlier times than Bitcoin's blockchain because it goes back to 1996 to Nick Chabot, Chabot's definition of smart contracts and the uh, uh, first example, the mo now most seminal example of a car lease, uh, where a, a buyer of a car, uh, upon missing, if uh, the, the buyer of the car misses a payment uh, on a car, uh, then the smart contract automatically locks the car and transfers the control over the car to the bank. This uh, automation of uh, automation of uh, of control transfer may uh, change uh, the relationship between the uh, the bank and the and the uh, lenders. Now. <clears throat> The, the examples of how smart contracts can be implemented and implemented and how they can change the business relationship have multiplied over the past uh, decade. And it has been said that the smart contracts will make contracting complete. They may allow us to get rid of courts because of the automation. They may allow us, for, uh, allow us to get rid of costly escrow and other trust, trusted uh, enforcers. And they may uh, enable complete decentralization, for example, through decentralized autonomous organizations. So there is a great promise in smart contracts. What we have set out to do is to analyze what are the benefits of smart contracts really. And for that, uh, we build a model where we distinguish the benefits of smart contracts from other technologies. So a smart contract is basically a computer program, where upon a trigger, it automatically executes an agreement between the two parties to the contract. And the key characteristic that we are going to draw upon is that it does not allow uh, an reneging because it is automated. So once the contract is, smart contract program is set in motion, then the parties cannot uh, withdraw from it and they cannot change their, uh, their actions. <clears throat> One of the most important um, limitation is that the trigger and the agreement in the definition of the smart contract needs to be uh, well defined and they need to be digital because the, both the trigger and the execution of the smart contract is digital, so at least digitally controlled. So that means that not every agreement lends itself to smart contracting. 
we are going to focus on the, the ones that, that do lend themselves to smart contracting. But the fact that the, there is a that smart contract needs this digital input is crucial to our analysis. Very often, the digital inputs come from sensors that only need to be insult, installed. They are not readily ever available. So this is where the connected sensors or Internet of Things sensors come into play. And in many examples, in fact, in most uh, prominent and most promising examples of application of smart contracts, there is a, the, the effect of smart contracts and the sensors have been confounded. So even in the example of the car lease that comes from Shabo, what we need for the smart contract to work is a, a sensor or a, 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 an automaton in the contract that is going to control the control over the car. You can't just write a program without a connection to the car that would make uh, that, that would uh, transfer the control rights to the bank. There needs to be a sensor to do that. So we recognize that the sensors and smart contracts are different things. There are different technologies, and uh, we set out to uh, by building a simple model to separate the effect of smart contracts and sensors to see which technology brings how much benefit in different situations and whether we need both of them or just one uh, in different circumstances. What we realize is that sensors, when they are implemented, they expand the space, the state space, which means we can write more detailed contracts over many more variables because now those variables are very visible and verifiable. Smart contracts restrict the strategy space. They restrict certain actions that the parties can take. Those have very different consequences on the efficiency of a contract. So we are going to uh, use a, a, a simple model of a simple um, example of a fruit shipment. So we are going to have two firms, a fruit firm and a transportation firm that contract over transportation of a perishable good, fruit. So uh, fruit, if it's uh, shipped in properly refrigerated conditions, uh, brings a high value to the fruit company, but it also costs um, a lot to, uh, to ship it in refrigerated conditions. When the fruit is not refrigerated when it's shipped, then it brings lower value to the fruit company but the transportation company can do it at a lower cost. We, uh, we assume uh, that it, is, uh, it, is, uh, it, it brings higher value to uh, refrigerate the fruit and, uh, and ship the fruits refrigerated, so the difference between the value and the cost is larger than when the fruit is not refrigerated, but it is still worthwhile to trade and to ship the fruit even if it is not refrigerated. Now, what is important what, and what we are going to draw upon is that the fruit company does not see immediately upon the liver of the fruit whether the, uh, the fruit was refrigerated or not. It often turns out a couple of days later when the fruit goes bad on the shelves because before it was sold or, uh, or needs to be sold at a discount, uh, but it's not visible right away. Uh, when the fruit is not shipped, both par parties obtain zero. This is a benchmark case. An important element of our model is that once they have an agreement, if uh, something goes wrong and the, uh, the dis a dispute is brought to a court, then both parties have a cost of taking legal action. We are making uh, simplifying assumptions uh, here that the cost is going to be the same no matter who's, uh, who initiated the action, no matter who wins. And we're going to also assume for simplicity of the argument right now that the courts are always fair and, uh, and they, can, they always have the ability to enforce the, the contract terms in full. Uh, the model can be modified to uh, incorporate other uh, uh, other, uh, uh, mod uh, other modifications, other, other aspects. But we want to bring out the main idea of what is the difference between the smart contracts and sensors in this uh, situation. So in this initial situation, before bringing any additional technology, smart contracts or 
um, sensors, the refrigeration is not observable uh, to the fur company, nor is it verifiable to court. Therefore, the contract cannot be written uh, taking into account whether the fruit is refrigerated or not. What is visible and verifiable uh, is whether a payment has been made and whether the fruit was delivered at all. So we are going to assume that the, there is already some information that is available and uh, we would need sensors to bring in more information. So the game in an, its extensive form uh, is represented in this tree. So what, uh, what we see is that the transportation company upon um, assigning the contract has a choice of, uh, the, of providing low quality delivery, which is without refrigeration, high quality delivery with refrigeration or no, no delivery. If the fruit is delivered, now the uh, fruit company can pay according to the contract or they can renege and not pay at all. If they do not pay, the transportation company can bring the, uh, the case to court and uh, either, and, and if it takes the, the, uh, the case to court, then incurring the cost lambda, after incurring the cost lambda, the terms of the contract are enforced. So in this initial, uh, uh, initial case, without any additional technology, what we see is that trade, trading is never efficient. So one thing is that if the legal costs are really large, then there is no contracting. And this is because the transportation company, if it shipped the fruit and it did not uh, receive the payment, will not find it worthwhile to, to go to the court because the payment they are going to receive will be lower than the legal costs. If so, they are not going to go to court if they are not being paid, knowing that the fruit company is not going to pay upon delivery, knowing that the transportation company is not going to deliver the fruit and they are not going to sign the contract. And even when contracting is occurring, uh, then if the legal costs are low enough that the contracting is occurring, because the fruit company cannot pay more for uh, high quality delivery and less for low quality delivery, then the quality of delivery always will be low. Uh, now, in this situation, if we add smart contracts, uh, would hope that maybe smart contracts would solve the problem. And it turns out that they solve a problem, but only partially. So let's assume that we are adding smart contracts to the situation we already have. So a smart contract is going to uh, automatically uh, uh, create payment uh, from uh, the fruit company to the transportation company upon delivery, because both delivery and the payment is verifiable. So now the fruit company no longer has a choice between pay or not pay upon delivery. So the, the, trick, the, the game tree looks differently because now these strategies are removed. And if these strategies are removed, now every time it is beneficial to trade, there will be trade. However, so we, we gained some, uh, we gained some, uh, uh, some, some space where the contracting is happening and it would not have been happening before. Now, what does not happen if we just add smart contracts is the uh, higher quality of delivery. There is no reason for the, uh, sh for the transportation company to provide a refrigerated delivery just because the payment is done uh, automatically. So that the, there will be all, still only low quality delivery provided. Now, if we add sensors, but only sensors, without smart contracts, then the sensors may allow us to dis distinguish between refrigerated or not refrigerated sh uh, shipment. So what we imagine here is a type of temperature sensors that are, uh, are put in uh, within a transportation, uh, uh, transportation package or close to the fruit or in the, in the container, and they register the, uh, the temperature and they can show upon the uh, delivery or maybe even earlier whether the, te the temperature has exceeded the limits, the, uh, the accepted bound. And if it has not, accepted, uh, uh, if it has not uh, exceeded accepted bounds, then it is considered to be high quality delivery. And it, if it has exceeded, then it is a low quality delivery. With that, 
uh, we are, now we are able to write a contract that is going to pay different price uh, if the delivery is high quality and a different price if the uh, quality, the delivery quality is low. With that, uh, in equilibrium, we are going to get a high quality delivery when delivery occurs, because there is, it is possible to write a, a, a contract that gives proper incentives. So this is a nice improvement. But just having smart contracts is not uh, taking away the problem that if the price that the transportation company is going to receive for high quality delivery is exceeding the legal cost, then again, the transportation company is not going to seek legal action if it's not being paid. Therefore, fruit company is not going to pay and therefore transportation company does not want to um, uh, sign the contract in the first place. So why the sensor, while the sensors are increasing the quality of delivery, uh, they are not improving on the region where contracting is not happening because legal costs are too high. Uh, so they make trade efficient when the trade occurs. Now, if we add both the smart contracts and the sensors, then we can write a more detailed contract that is distinguishing between the refrigerated and unrefrigerated uh, delivery. And at the same time, we can uh, eliminate the possibility of fruit company reneging and not paying, because now the payment can happen automatically upon the reading of the sensors. With that, we are uh, achieving efficient, uh, efficient trade for all parameter regions. So while each of the uh, technologies could not fully achieve this efficiency for any parameter, uh, par parameter set, then uh, together they can achieve this efficiency. So there is some, there is complementary. So what we have shown with this simple game is that uh, the, the fact that smart contracts and sensors affect the interactions in the contracting differently they have different effects on the outcome of the contracting and whether the contract is signed in the first place. So sensors increase the state space over which the parties can contract because they give more information. And smart contracts reduce the strategy space. They eliminate certain actions that the parties can take. So they can be, uh, what is important is that they can be implemented separately. They don't have to be implemented together and implementing each of those, those technologies bring different benefits. And of course, they have separate costs. So what we are seeing from this, uh, uh, from this summary table here is that smart contracts, when we implement smart contracts, we are extending the possibility, we're extend, extending situations in which the contract is signed at all. But if we add sensors, then we are going to uh, improve the quality of the service when the contracting happens. So they have, those two technologies have different uh, results, different effects on the, on contracting. Now with that, we actually can say more about whether it is beneficial to adopt one of the technologies, the other technology, or both of them together. And they may, it may not always be uh, best to implement both and may not always be beneficial to implement smart contracts or to implement uh, the sensors. So um, what, uh, what is beneficial depends on the cost of implementing uh, smart contracts, cost of implementing the sensors and the legal costs. The legal costs are the driving force here because this is where smart contracts are, the automatic execution in smart contracts is playing uh, a big role. So what we find is that under some conditions, adding second technology brings no benefit. When we have smart contracts, then uh, Internet of Things is not adding anything. And if, the, uh, if we have sensors and smart contracts are not adding anything, and in other times, it is beneficial to implement one technology only if it makes sense to implement both. So one of them uh, in itself is not adding benefit only together. 
So it is uh, important to see uh, under what conditions we get different, uh, different results. Um, so first of all, if the legal costs are relatively low, are actually medium uh, in this graph, if the legal costs are very low, it never makes sense to implement smart contracts if the smart contracts are, are costly to implement because they do not bring additional efficiency in contracting. However, if the smart contracts are um, medium between, then it may, may sense, make sense to implement smart contracts, but only without the sensors. Whereas for region, when it makes sense to implement the sensors, then uh, adding smart contracts is not adding any more value. So bearing the cost of adding smart contracts uh, would actually be detrimental to the, to the surplus because it would be bearing the cost without any additional value to the, to the trade. Whereas if we have large, legal, uh, large cost of legal action, then there are regions when it makes sense to implement smart contracts only. But if implementing sensors is not too costly, then it makes sense to implement sensors, but only if we can do it together with smart contracts. Only if it makes sense to bear the cost of implementing both technologies together. For large legal costs, implementing just sensors is actually not adding any, any value. It's not improving and improving the trade. So this is for social efficiency. This is when it would be best for the, for the trading benefit, overall trading benefit to implement one or both technologies. But it may be different than the in, individual incentives to adopt. So while, it, while the, the, the surplus created by uh, implementing these technologies can be divided between uh, the two parties, how the surplus is divided depends on their bargaining power, relative bargaining power. So now it turns out that in some cases, like for example, for smart contracts, when the transportation company has low bargaining power and we have low legal costs, the fruit company will have incentive to impose smart contracts, which are not necessary. They would bring no overall benefit to the, to the trade surplus. There would be an additional cost of implementing smart contracts. But by implementing smart contracts, the fruit company can extract more surplus from the transportation company. So they will have incentives to go for a social less efficient uh, uh, action and in fact to implement more technology that, than, is opt uh, than is socially optimal. And also, if uh, transportation costs has low bargaining power, they may be worse off with implementation of sensors. So, uh, so, so it will increase the overall social surplus but it will decrease the price uh, or the, 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 the price versus the quality of the service provided uh, that the surplus that the transportation company uh, gets. And if we account for the fact that the individual incentives to adopt may go contrary to the social incentives, especially in the context of sensors, we may understand the incentives to sabotage sensors if they are implemented, even though uh, sabotaging sensors could destroy the, uh, the social surplus. So uh, the, the last point is actually the subject of our next project. And to summarize this project, uh, we have uh, right here, we have built a model to carefully separate the effects of smart contracts and uh, connected sensors. Uh, and uh, uh, we recognize that sensors increase the state space over which we can contract and smart contracts reduce the strategy space. So the actions that the, that the uh, parties can take. And with that, they have different effects on the efficiency of the contract. Uh, and as they have different effect on the efficiency of the contracting and they have different costs of implementation, we derive conditions where it is socially optimal to adopt one of the technologies or both of them together. 
And later, we also analyzed the incentives to adopt. And we showed that even though the technologies may be socially optimal to adopt, there may be one, uh, one party that will either oppose or will lose on the implementation of, uh, of the technology, which may lead to sabotage. So with that, let me thank you. Uh, and I look forward to the Q&A. Thank you very much.